Hey, Coach Mike. Uh, let's look at the uh, first analysis today. Uh, just going into on the front side, two phases of pitching where we lift up the legs starting to stride. This phase is at about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of delivery. This is where you generate all your power. And the stride ends, or the phase ends, right when the front foot lands and almost settles. So right at that point right in here, right in between those two frames. That's where the stride ends. And then the next phase is what's called the throwing phase, which you're going to see yourself has gone into already. So we started to release the upper half before we left, or before we landed. So if I take this back before you release it, right there, that's how we should land, okay? So let's go back to here. Since we're pulling out, everything's going to start going a little bit early. So you're going into the throwing phase. Uh, before we land. So ASMI has a study that talks about high velocity pitchers and low velocity pitchers. What they say is that high velocity pitchers when they get right to their stride phase they have not gone into the throwing phase. In other words they do not blend them together. So right here you landed and you went about a quarter of the way or two tenths of the way into your throwing phase. So you're doing everything right but this is happening too early and that changes a lot of things. It really reduces your hip to shoulder separation because when I pull this arm out, this arm starts to come this way, and that kills the stretch that we put in the hips during a hip-to-shoulder separation. I like where you're landing, which is a good spot. Uh, we want to land either on the line or inside the line, so you're landing. But I'll show you the other side of this, and this is one thing you may want to be careful, because this is what may be pulling us out, is when you take your arm that far back over here, the reason why we pull out early is to get it back into this position. So the recommendation that I have is when you take your ball out of the glove, feel it come more back behind you. And I heard your dad mention you did some wall drills and some fence drills. Well, you, you need to keep doing those because it hasn't changed yet. Okay, you see that? So what happens if we're to change that and get it more behind your back in this position, then when you land, there will be no reason to pull out. Then what you're going to do is instead of out, this is going to come down. And this is going to engage your chest or your trunk. And then instead of you pulling out here, so you're pulling out, you're going to still have a little bit of that tilt, which is called contralateral tilt. That's a fancy name for leaning toward the glove side. You'll still have some of that, but you're going to feel more of your chest coming forward, bringing the arm forward rather than pulling out. But all that is caused by you over here and doing this. Uh, so that's probably your weakest link that I'm looking at right now. So let's look at a couple other things within the windup. I like where you land. When you land here and get some power going that way, I think you'll stabilize well and that will help bring your chest further down. Let's go to the side view, take a gander. Mm -hmm. Alright, so imagine I'm, I'm at first base. So your first move is they're going to take off, right? So part of being a pitcher of the resume is time to the plate. So a good time to the plate is about 1.4 and under. It's kind of like the 60 where they talk about if you get 7 flat or under, that's the magic number. So as I start my first move, watch your body. See how it goes all the way back? And now it starts to move where we started. So that's about probably two tenths of a second, three tenths. It's a, it's a very simple fix. All you want to do is keep the weight on the back leg. When you raise up this leg, you're not going to feel yourself having to rock back. You may want to get a little bit tighter with your feet. So we're going to lift up. And then as you're lifting up, you start to move your hips forward is what we want. But let's see how you're doing. Once I get to there, all the weight's on the back leg. Let's redraw our line because ASMI has another study that talks about high velocity pitchers will get their body moving earlier than low velocity pitchers and what that means is that the top of the leg lift which you got a nice leg lift, I like your leg lift a lot top is right there, you see you haven't moved now you're a little bit on the inside which is okay if I was to draw a line, let's take this one away let's draw another line right up through our foot You can see how you're, you're, you're just a fraction on the other side, but you really want to feel that back leg get in kind of this position. And what we want to feel is we want to feel the majority of our body weight inside this drive leg at the top of the leg lift. When you do that with that beautiful leg kick like that, it's going to be fun. Now, here's the thing. 
you have to ride the wave. Once you're up there that high and you're out there this far, we don't want to leave this body back, okay? We want to be moving forward, okay? That's okay to go into that tilt where you're leaning back, but we want to be moving forward. So here's the thing, if we bring up our leg, as we bring up our leg, let's move our body forward so that the top of the leg lift, you're out here, and then you can go into this breakdown. Now you won't want to have this leg rush out in front of you because look how it reaches out here now. You won't have to do that anymore because you're going to see, you're going to feel momentum and you're going to feel yourself starting to move forward because this body's out here forward more. So this leg needs to start to relax. But what you do now is you lean back and you reach with your front leg and you really open early. So when we're here, see how the foot is here? We want to keep that foot toward this camera the whole way. And then when we finally get out about 90% of our stride, we open and land. But look how quick you open. Next frame, you're starting to open up. You're starting to open up here. Open, 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 open. And now you're traveling, 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 and you're all the way open, and then you're finally landing. So we want to hold that closed position in the bottom half. When you swing out this leg like that, this leg starts to turn into, and we want to keep what's called torsion in this leg. We'll look at that on the back side. I'll explain what torsion is so you can drive better. All right, so there's leg plant. Let's draw a little dot. I'm losing power on my phone. Sorry, it's starting to fade on me, but let's see right there. Good, you're okay. So what we're looking at, we're looking for that front leg to stabilize, and you're in a really good position for it to stabilize because your ankle is in front of your knee, so that's very good that it's, it can stabilize well that way. But we need to start putting more force. Remember, our front leg was slinging out there. It's a lot different than a sling, than a drive and a pitcher's plunge down to that front leg, but you're still in a really good position to handle that. I like it. Since you don't have a lot of momentum and you're pulling out, you're going to see your chest really isn't coming forward. And that's because we started from a top stop position and we started pulling our glove out early. So you don't want to see your chest kind of turns here and then it just kind of turns to the side. We want to see that chest, once you get into this position, we want to see this chest start to move forward and this leg stiffen up so that it brings the arm. That's called the kinetic chain. The power goes up through our foot into our hips. It gets our hips to rotate. Once the hips are rotating, the arm's coming up the cock, and that creates our separation right there in the midsection. So your biggest rubber band is stretched right at foot contact. Once your foot hits and it pushes this hip back a little further, that stretch can't hold anymore, and guess what happens? This thing is coming through. But we want the chest to come through first, and then the arm. So that's a synopsis of what we want to do in a nutshell, and you're doing okay. We just need a little bit more momentum on the front side, and that will probably make a big difference from there we'll see what happens from there but getting your body starting to move let's watch the drive leg in the back side and the reason why I want to get the body to move is so that when you're ready to drive the leg that it's in a good 45 degree angle when you get down here without turning in see how it starts to turn in so you can get it at a good 45 degree angle let's say right here and then this is where you drive with your back leg if you get your body going, it gets you easier in that angle and getting ready to drive. But you see how your foot's starting to open up here? They have what's called torsion. I talked about that earlier. That's where we want to keep this leg out like we're doing a squat. If you do a squat, your toes are pointed out, and then if they happen to go in a little bit, your leg starts shaking because it loses stability when, you're, when your back knee turns in. So we want to keep our back knee out the whole time until we're ready to drive. But since your foot starts opening up quick, this knee starts turning in. So that's, what, that's why we want to keep that foot down there so we keep good torsion in this back leg. And then right before it turns in, we want to see a drive. But I don't see that straightening out, so you're just kind of turning in that hip. And you still have more power to use out of the back side. See, so right here, if you were to come in here and drive, this hip would be pushing this way, and then watch your arm going this way, and that creates incredible stretch right there. See that? That's your hip to shoulder separation that you're starting to get. But you can get more of it by driving with the back leg before that knee turns in, and you can get more of it with not bringing our arm. This is the unhealthy way of doing it, is bringing our arm back here, is bringing it back here, and we can bring our elbow back, but we want to be careful bringing that ball back. That makes a big difference. 
All right, so other than that, um, I'll put the vitals up on the uh, on the title of the uh, video, and I uh, appreciate you guys coming out. Look forward to working to you, and I'll send this uh, I'll send this video out uh, to a couple of the coaches just to let you know some of the ones that uh, may have their number with, so that we can collaborate and if we want to keep in touch or do whatever. I think it's important that you know all the coaches that are working with you uh, kind of keep in touch with each other to make sure we're all on the same page, and uh, just remember, hey, the best coach is you. Uh, you don't digest everything, what everybody gives you, and uh, and turn it into what's going to make you the best pitcher. So thanks again for coming, and uh, give me a shout back if you have any questions. Thanks so much.